The Tesla Model S has been in production since 2012 and has cornered the electric luxury executive sedan market. Now Mercedes has just revealed the EQE and it has put the Model S squarely in its sights. In this video I'll perform a side-by-side -side comparison of the exterior, interior, technology, performance and pricing of these two and we'll find out if Mercedes can take down Tesla. Earlier this year, Mercedes revealed the flagship EQS, but that's a much bigger car than the Model S. With the EQE, Mercedes targets the Model S perfectly. When you take a look at the exterior dimensions of these two cars, they're within a few inches of one another. One key difference is the wheelbase, which in the Mercedes is about six inches longer. Built on the EVA2 platform, the EQE is styled like a smaller EQS. It utilizes the same principles of a single bow that runs front to back and a stretched wheelbase that accommodates a cab forward design. With the smaller length, I think the proportions of the EQE are better than those of the EQS. The front is dominated by a glass grille that contains the technology sensors. The LED lights can also be had with an optional digital light feature. It can project symbols and shapes on the roadway and also turn off parts of the light so as not to blind oncoming traffic. In the rear, it's also got the same helix lights as the EQS. These recall a light bulb and give you a visual clue that this is an electric car. Like the EQS, the EQE also gets optional automatic doors. Also like the EQS, with its sleek profile, it achieves an impressive drag coefficient of 0.20. And that's just a hair better than the Model S's already impressive 0.208 drag coefficient. The Model S's profile is sleek and elegant too, and it has been updated recently with a few modifications. These include front air curtains, a rear diffuser, and blacked out trim. No automatic doors for the Model S, although that's a possibility given that the Model X has them and supposedly the Cybertruck won't have any door handles at all. Tesla lights are also standard LED headlights, no matrix capability. But perhaps the biggest issue with the Model S's exterior design is that it is aging. After nine years, it's become a familiar sight and really needs a full redesign, not just a refresh. The interior is always where Tesla has fallen short in the luxury segment, and the EQE puts that even more into focus now. For seats, Tesla features vegan leather, with three colors, black, white, and a newer cream. Mercedes puts those seats to shame with its perforated leather seats that are available in multiple colors and styles, a comfort seat and a sports seat. These are accented by multiple trim finish choices, including wood, metal, and Neotex. Neotex is a blend of leather and neoprene. Tesla goes for a super minimalist look in the cabin with all functions consolidated into a single horizontal 17-inch center screen. There's also a 12.3-inch instrument cluster and an 8-inch screen in the rear. Wireless controllers allow for in-car gaming fun and for your entertainment you can connect to the internet or your favorite streaming services. Mercedes hasn't quite shown what the base EQE gets, but I suspect it will be similar to what we see in the EQS, a 12.8 inch infotainment screen. But the real showstopper is the optional hyperscreen, the same as we saw in the EQS, a 56 inch screen that spans from end to end. Behind the continuous glass, it integrates three screens, a 12.3 inch instrument cluster, a 17.7 inch center infotainment screen and a 12.3 inch passenger screen. Through this screen, the passenger can watch movies, control the entertainment or manage the navigation. This incredible hyperscreen neatly integrates the turbine vents and ambient lighting. But not all is bad with the Model S's interior. Unlike the split glass roof of the EQE, the glass roof of the Model S is continuous. The cool factor is also high with the yoke steering and rear seat gaming center. But where Tesla gives you games to play while you wait for your car to charge, the EQE gives you relaxation sounds and fragrances to help you take a nap. Now, 
we don't have interior dimensions for the EQE, so we can't tell if the longer wheelbase results in more interior space. But what we do know is that the trunk space of the Model S is significantly bigger than that of the EQE. Tesla is hard to beat when it comes to efficiency. Both Tesla and Mercedes are leaders in cutting-edge technologies. Both get basic features like collision mitigation, but it's the advanced technologies where these two are battling it out. There's autonomous driving with both offering systems that will maintain speed, keep distance, keep in lane, and change lanes whenever the driver demands. Tesla offers a pricey package that will navigate on expressways, has the summon feature, and in the future will drive itself. Interestingly, when the EQS was revealed, Mercedes was to equip it with the Level 3 autonomous driving system that would allow hands-free driving on certain stretches of motorway in Germany up to a certain speed. However, there is no word as to if the system will be available on the EQE. Another exciting frontier of technology is the use of artificial intelligence in automobiles. With the zero-layer concept for the hyperscreen, Mercedes wants the driver to have to scroll through zero menu levels to get to the feature they want. It should all be available right on the home screen. By learning the driver's habits and repetitive actions, the hyperscreen will have ready on the screen the apps and functions it thinks the driver needs. In a similar vein, with its yoke steering and by removing the gear shifter and turn signal stocks, Tesla is also trying to anticipate the driver's needs through artificial intelligence. The car aims to determine by itself whether the driver wants to go forward or in reverse and where you need to turn, thereby signaling on its own. There are, however, a few technology features that only Mercedes offers. These include optional rear-wheel steering, head-up display with augmented reality, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. So that brings us to the all-important segment of performance. Tesla doesn't reveal its battery sizes, but EV database estimates it to be 90 kilowatt hour. Coincidentally, that is also the same size as the battery of the EQE. However, one key difference is that the long-range Model S is dual-motor all-wheel drive, while at this time the EQE comes in only rear-wheel drive. A future all-wheel drive model is planned. Presumably, there will also be a future AMG model that will compete with the tri-motor Plaid trim. Comparing a rear-wheel drive to an all-wheel drive is not a fair comparison, but it still brings to light a few important differences. Let's start with the all-important range. Mercedes claims a range of 660 kilometers based on the WLTP cycle. The Model S all-wheel drive has an EPA range of 652 kilometers. The WLTP range typically yields a higher number than the EPA cycle. So for the EQE's EPA range, I will estimate a number that is about 25% less. The EQE all-wheel drive version that is comparable to the Model S will get even less range. So we can already see that the Model S's range is superior and Tesla remains the king of efficiency. Tesla also doesn't reveal motor performance numbers, but we do know the horsepower and torque for the EQE. What we don't know is the acceleration time. But based on the EQS, which has just slightly higher power and torque numbers, I would estimate a 0 to 100 time somewhere in the high 6 second range. For the all-wheel drive EQE, it would also be safe to use the EQS as a benchmark and estimate that the acceleration time would be in the high 4 second range. That would still put it short of the Tesla all-wheel drive. Mercedes also falls short when it comes to charging power. Using a 400 volt system, the max charging power is 170 kW, slower than the 250 kW of the Tesla supercharging system. Tesla does have the advantage of a more extensive charger network, but given that it's going to allow other cars to use it soon, that may be a moot point. One point in Mercedes' favor is that for bi-directional charging. It will first launch the feature in Japan and follow up with other markets. Adaptive air suspension is standard in the Model S, 
but optional in the EQE. The Model S clearly has the upper hand when it comes to performance, but will it also cost more? Well, we don't have pricing figures for the EQE yet, but we can make some educated guesses based on patterns we are seeing with the EQS. The just released EQS prices in Germany are fairly close to its combustion engine counterpart, the Mercedes S-Class. If that holds true for the EQE also, we could estimate the prices of EQE by comparing it to the E-Class prices. If that approach turns out to be correct, the EQE could end up being priced quite a bit lower than the Model S. Keep in mind though that Tesla recently raised its prices by 10,000 euro, so that has widened the gap further. We also would want to wait until we have the full detail on the pricing of EQE options so that we can do an apples to apples comparison with the Model S. I expect the Mercedes options will add up quickly. The EQE has the Model S in its sights, but can Mercedes take down Tesla? Hmm, not sure. It can certainly give Tesla a run for its money, but Tesla does remain king when it comes to range and performance. Mercedes, however, excels at luxury and the fit and finish will surpass Tesla. The technology of the EQE is forward looking and competes well with Tesla. I'm sure that many Mercedes drivers that went over to Tesla would be happy to come back for the EQE. But which one would you buy? The EQE or the Model S? Let me know in the comments below. And if you would like me to compare the EQE to another EV, let me know the name of that car too. Please give the video a like, share your comments below and subscribe to the driver download.